today curry is known everywhere in the world. It is known everywhere in, in Africa. And most of this is because of, the, of its human, uh, human um, capacity. But this has not always been the case. Uh, at the onset of curry, there was not adequate capacity for research, both in terms of um, uh, infrastructure as well as uh, in human capacity. But the biggest de deficit uh, was on human capacity. And uh, at this juncture, uh, we are glad that uh, uh, the US government came in through the USAID and um, it was managed to finance uh, an airlift of um, a selected number of curry scientists who are all at uh, uh, bachelor's level. They were just doing research, but they didn't know much about uh, how research should really be done. And um, this first airlift, which happened in 1988, uh, involved a total number of um, 26 scientists. Because before that, the whole of Kenya, the whole of Kari, there were less than, um, uh, let's say, five PhDs, or scientists with PhDs. There were even less with masters. Personally, I, with three others, uh, we were sent to Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, where I, I undertook a master's degree in uh, <clears throat> a master's degree in uh, agronomy. And uh, on coming back, uh, this degree really enabled me uh, to do quite a bit of work, especially on cassava and sweet potato. So my training in U.S. That uh, opportunity that I had to spend time in the U.S. opened up uh, my career, I can say, because when I was there, I was able to work with other uh, advanced scientists. I was able to be trained even on research management. And I can uh, very faithfully say this was the launching of my career in science and even my career in management, and not only for me, but even for the 26 uh, colleagues with me, because today, those 26, they are all in the leadership of uh, Kari, and this really has taken this country very far, where we would not have been uh, even if we had spent very many, many, many years. Mm -hmm.